my name is Iñaki Guía. I come from Basque country where there is a great industrial ecosystem in there and I will speak about the overall equipment effectiveness metric and how that metric is related to cybersecurity. So big question, how is cybersecurity impacting our uh, productions, production lines? That's a big question, I mean, many of us do say, and mainly, yes, we say that cybersecurity is seen as an industry enabler uh, that is, shouldn't be seen as a cost, but as an investment. But really, how do we demonstrate that empirically? How we demonstrate that those cybersecurity mechanisms that uh, we have to put within industry have a return on investment? Indeed, there are many KPIs oriented to productions of how different failures are impacting in productions, but there are few cybersecurity mechanisms, well, not, not cybersecurity mechanisms, cybersecurity uh, KPIs oriented of how cybersecurity incidents are impacting in industry. And this is more observable in industry when one incident, might be cyber or not, can have a, a real impact in, in industry. This presentation is oriented to uh, machining tool. Machining tool is one of the big industries that we have in Basque industry and could be extendable also to manufacturing processes, all, not all, some of the manufacturing processes. And I will speak about discrete processes. Automated discrete industrial processes are those where the manufacturing process is carried out sequently and uh, all components are handled uh, one by one until the final uh, product is obtained. Manufacture is by parts, milestones, and that I, they, well, they, we, we can say that uh, they are called discrete because they are usually they usually handle digital magnitudes of the concept of uh, all or nothing and representing concepts such as if a piece or component uh, is or is not there or has arrived to one certain zone or not or if I am in a security zone or not. Um, there are other con uh, processes like continuous processes, but I will not go on, on them because we are going to focus on discrete processes. Um, I would like to, to continue with saying where pro is production managing Purdue model. Yesterday we showed that Purdue model is off or is not. Uh, um, let's say uh, it's on the stage. In level zero, we have different um, sensors and actuators, but in machining tool, we have different machines in Portuguese model, and those machines are governed by different PLCs that co are governing as well the X, Y, Z axles in order to reshape and shape the components for obtaining the, desi the desired components. We don't usually have in machining tool any um, SCADI systems or DCS systems that are supervising those uh, mechanisms. The supervision, the supervision system is focused in mesh system. Mesh systems, for those who don't know that, is the manufacturing execution system. The manufacturing execution system is a system that gathers inputs, gathers all the data from different PLCs that are embedded in, in machines like, uh, like industrial drills, like uh, yeah, like winches, 
and they ga are gathering that information in order to quantify and to qualify those uh, the production itself of of uh, the manufacturing process. So we can say that in Portugal model, the production manage the production management is uh, really done in this layer called production layer. Okay. Uh, before I said that there are many KPIs oriented to how production is being managed and that there were many KPIs oriented to that and that there were few KPIs oriented of how cybersecurity incidents were impacting on uh, different, uh, uh, let's say, uh, processes, industrial processes. Right now, I am going to speak about OE, which is a metric of a metric, a production metric, and after that, I will try to do an exercise of how OE is directly uh, linked, linked, relationed, yeah, linked to cybersecurity incidents. When we talk about OE, overall equipment effectiveness, first we have to talk about lean manufacturing. For those who, who, who are in this industry, you know what I'm talking about. Um, a convergence of market drivers uh, is reshaping nowadays uh, the factory automation in the pursuit of perfect production. Let's say there is no perfect production, but in the pursuit of that perfect production, overall equipment uh, effectiveness, OE, has become a, or has emerged as a yardstick that tells manufacturers whether they can produce high quality products um, as fast as possible and with fewer interruptions. And that is an overall understanding of what lean manufacturing is. And it, Lean manufacturing is based in two uh, tools. The first one is TPM, that's the total production uh, manufacturing uh, tool that is, is based in eight pillars in order to reduce different ways and waiting times in order to increase productivity. And we have TQM, which is the total quality management or total quality manufacturing process as well that is based in five constants. The first one is the product itself, second one is the process, third one is the organizations that put in place and put in environment in order to implement that process. We have also a fourth point that is the um, leadership that guides the organization to, towards that quality and finally the uh, commitment to excellence throughout the organization. Both of them, while uh, TPM is trying to increase productivity, uh, TQM is trying to increase uh, or better the, the, the well, while TPM is <laughs> increasing the productivity, TQM is increasing the, the quality. First reference to OE dates back to 1982 when uh, Neki Nakajima, I would like to, to say it correctly, Neki Nakajima uh, was the person that uh, defined it as an integral part of TPM in his book uh, TPM Tenkai. And it, w it became a w uh, well known in the Western world when Fuji, Fuji Photofilm uh, opened three, three uh, factories in the Netherlands so that the Western and the European side came aware about what was happening in, in, in Japan as well. So uh, the challenge from, for the Europeans was to have these zero defects and zero waste, zero cost approximation uh, of, of proximity and approach and that's why they initiated one uh, initiative that uh, had the challenge to organize the 
OE uh, standard endeavor that gave rise to OE standard uh, in 2001. After that, OE standard has become as one of the biggest uh, standards and let's say, uh, yeah, one of the biggest standards in manufacturing uh, organization. OE has three submetrics. The first one is availability that defines different measures or measure, uh, measures different, uh, let's say, uh, product lines, not, not product, product losses in, in terms of time, uh, in terms of downtimes. Performance is another metric, submetric, that is defining the different times that you are losing because the, uh, the different uh, low speed that you have in the machines and the quality is defining the products that are, have not been released because they are not, uh, they, they are bad, they have bad quality, they have some kind of porosity or what, whatever. So what, what it is used in the world, we have three main areas. The first one is in Japan and it's extended area in southeast of Asia. The second one is in Europe, that we have a good reference in Germany, and also, and that is because I come from there in Basque country, and another one in the States, the United States, with good reference like Born. Where it is used in, in the factory, mobile devices and central devices can help the supervisors in order to track and to see if all the operation is getting, it's, it's, it's being well, it's, will, it's getting on well, and it's uh, updated by adjusting different parameters. The uh, machine engineers can also know if they are tracking all machines all around the, uh, uh, let's say, the the plant, and they can also know uh, if they are reducing uh, any parameters in terms of downtimes and increasing availability. The operators as well uh, can use the technology of machine to machine technology, and that technology can help them in order to know uh, if. Uh, those, seek, uh, those, tasks, those tasks that they, they are uh, operating are being retrieved by MES systems and they can categorize those type of tasks. And machine, well, not, not machine, but the, the uh, quality engineers can also know if uh, these uh, tasks that are being developed they can de detect the defected units so that those units can be identified and can be, uh, yeah, can be identified by different tools such as uh, data analytics and monitoring tools. So when we have an OE, OE we, we can calculate the OE by knowing the plant production time we have the available time for uh, calculating the OE that due to different stops, different weights, breakdowns, and uh, yeah, different breakdowns that give us the production time. And that production time due to uh, different micro stops on different low speed that we have in machine because no, all machines are working in 100% that give us the real production time. And the real production time, from the real production time, we can uh, quit all those units that have not been released due to, because they have, they have some kind of porosity or they, they were not the, the good ones. And finally, what we calculate is the final OEE, okay? 
the final overall equipment effectiveness. Mathematically expressed, we can say that uh, availability is the relation between operation time and operation plan time. The performance is about the relation of ideal, ideal cycle time and the relation of operation time and number of total units. And the quality, the three of them, the final one, quality is the rel relation of number of units conforming and number of total units. So let's put an example, and this is very interesting example. Let's say that there, there is one product, one production that has been already performed, that is a, a manufacturing machine that uh, has already, is working in doing 1,000 units per hour and has done a total production of 128,000 units. And from from those 128, 121, 600 were good. So we have a total time of 200 hours, and due to a start, different changes, breakdowns that we have before the production, uh, we spent 40 hours. That is not spend, spending 40 hours. I mean, we lost 40 hours doing that. So we have an available time of 80% for, for doing that, the available, uh, not, not available time, the, the percent or the, the availability for doing that is the 80%. The available time is of uh, 80, uh, 160 hours, and the production capacity for 160 hours is doing 1,000 units per hour is of 160,000 uh, units. Due to microstrop and low speed, as we are not working at 100% is of 80% uh, because in the title, in the statement, we said that we produce 128,000 units. So if we do the relationship with that, we score that percent. So we have uh, a time left of 128 hours. We lost 32 hours, 32 hours due to microstops and low speed. And finally, we scored 121, 600 units out of 128,000 units. That means that we have a quality of 95%. Okay. And finally, we scored an OE of 60%. That's multiplying availability, performance, and quality. That they were the three main uh, metrics that we we had. What does this mean? What does uh, what what does means that what means that we have a 68.8 percent of uh, of a score? Well, OE give give us give us the opportunity to classify to sorry to classify um, different scores in terms of machines, also in terms of uh, lines and in different uh, plants. But it's not only just one, one number. We, we had a 60%, and that was unacceptable uh, regarding this, this uh, score. It gave us the opportunity to compare with the best in their class and for those, and compare with those that have, been, that have reached the excellence. But not only that, that uh, they give us the opportunity to know, and this is the most important issue, to, to know how we are demonstrating and how we are identifying, identifying the time losses in terms of APQ, in terms of availability, performance, and quality. And they give us the chance to know if we, are imp if we have to improve in those terms. And, and if we have to improve in those terms, we have to invest on those terms. And by investing that, we have to know, or we should know, we should be the return on investment on those types of issues. 
This is another example of uh, by Born. Born is a good organization in the States. This is a year line. You can see the different productions information, the production count in terms of bottles, beer bottles that have been in one product line, and the overall uh, equipment efficiency analysis, uh, analysis. You can see also the different failures uh, or top failures that we have. Uh, and these top failures, you can see that there are some failures related to uh, that there is no beer, there are no bottles, there are no crowns, there are no, no issues. Those, um, um, above all, almost all of them have to do with uh, functional issues, but none of them have to do with cybersecurity issues. Okay? So, and this is because all failures and stops are concerning to production uh, failures. They have to do with production failures like uh, internal and external causes, like breakdowns and machine failures, such as internal causes uh, that have to do with uh, mechanical, electrical, and some other issues, with safety functional failures that have to do with ISO 14, 223, 224, please, <laughs> and uh, some other failures that have to do with restrictions that are dependent with external activities, uh, for example, with uh, logistics, with maintenance, um, with other operations, with weights that have more to do with weight, internal issues, and with uh, non-programmed ones that have to do with more with the business model issues like strikes or uh, low demands. So let's see about uh, one standard that has to do with the 14224. I don't know if you know about this standard. The 14224 is related to uh, uh, natural gas and petroleum industries, and they define different data equipment, and they define also different failures. They have a taxonomy in there, and taxonomy of different failures. And that taxonomy is defined in different ta uh, tables. And we don't have any issues related to cybersecurity. The, they, are also, they are always talking about safety functional failures like uh, maintenance errors, fabrication failures, and so on. Um, there are some attempts that are being defined with uh, NISTIR 82. Uh, 19 that are defining different anomalies um, respected to manufacturing profiles and are linked also to different uh, standards. But again, how is cyber security impacting on production? We don't know. We don't really know. We just are uh, seeing on news that somehow one, it has passed, we know how much it, uh, it, has, it has cost. But we, are, we don't know how, uh, how, how much time we are losing because cybersecurity incidents are impacting in our production. So we don't know how much we are going to invest in order to uh, improve and to decrease those uh, time losses. And when we are decreasing those time losses, we are decreasing uh, risk as well. So here is our proposal in order to match the OEE, that is a production management issue with cybersecurity incidents. We Remember that we uh, said that cybersecurity, not cybersecurity, man the management model in Portio model is in mesh system. The typical mesh system architecture is as follows. We have an OPC server that gathers inputs from PLCs that as well, those PLCs, this, those PLCs are gathering information from uh, different uh, matching tools, in this case, uh, industrial drills, winches, or whatever. 
and that information is being transferred to the main server, and the main server uh, stores uh, that in, in the database and also calculates the business logic. And among all the activities that they do, or the, the main server does, the uh, main server also uh, calculates the OE. And we have the front end with the web browsers and with the terminal that can control and monitor the different issues. So we have two problems to solve. The first one is that no standards is being, is defining all those activities, all those cybersecurity incidents that are impacting in, uh, in the production management in OE. And indeed, there are no activities, no, no systems, there, are no, there is no an implementation in terms of mesh systems or intermediate systems, could be a gateway or not, that is capturing all those informations, all those, all those uh, yeah, uh, pieces of data in order to know how we are uh, transforming that data in production. So our proposal, my proposal to this is to extend ISO 14 to 24 and NISTIR like standards, there could be more, in order to know how we are going to trace those cybersecurity incidents and to know how they are going to impact in production. Because nowadays there are no activities, there are no systems that are tracing that. We cannot know how we are measuring cybersecurity incidents in terms of productivity, in terms of production. And the second step of this is that we should implement that by doing an intermediate system or a gateway in order to define that. So that should be an overall uh, equipment effectiveness security model that we have to define. So before we said that we have a planned production time with available time that we have different breakdowns and so on related to uh, productions. But right now we, what we have is the same, but taking into account uh, the denial of service activities and other activities that have to do with cybersecurity incidents related to availability. The same with uh, performance. I have seen, uh, I have audited many industrial uh, platforms and I've seen that uh, many of them, they are running in less than 30% of what they should run and the lowest and the speed that they should run is in 70%, 70% of, of, of what they should run. And that was because they, they, they had a, a malware. So due to malware or bad traffic between devices in, in, in OT uh, scheme, uh, we, we had this uh, real production time. And we have also different attack scenarios uh, that have to, to do with, with the good parts, I mean, with the quality issue, okay, in terms of integrity and confidentiality. So finally, we don't have just an OEE that have to do with a functional part, but also an OEE that gathers inputs from the cybersecurity side. So if we extend this to the ISO 14224, that is a standard that is being used, as I said, in, 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 in the petroleum and in industry, we can add security equipment and add different anomalies and events in security. And we can extend that taxonomy in terms of not only putting just functional safety failures, but also in putting 
including, incorporating, uh, let's say, cybersecurity incidents, anomalies, and events. And that could be a good challenge to, to, to modelize, to model uh, somehow what I'm going to show you right now. I don't know if you know the, the document of NISTIR 8219 that defines different models, different incidents, like plain test passwords, uh, connectivity to internet, firmware uh, uh, updates, and so on. But we can model that and we can know how these incidents are impacted, not only in the terms of uh, C, uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability that has the scope of cybersecurity, but also in an extended OEE area, how they are uh, impacting in OEE. In, for example, in the abnormal network traffic between devices that should have a direct impact in availability and performance. And we should be able to uh, model that more detailed. So up to now, what we have had is just all those inputs that we had from the OE traditional APQ, APQ failures. We have imported that to mesh systems, and we had an output that was the uh, traditional OEE. But right now, with this proposal, what we have is some different cybersecurity inputs from uh, different uh, industrial systems and cybersecurity incidents, like could be firewalls as well, PLCs, IDS, uh, OPC servers, other servers, etc. And we are able to know with all these incidents how we are trying to, to reduce all those time losses that are being originated because of uh, cybersecurity incidents. And that gives us the opportunity to know how uh, the return on industrial security investment. Be let's, let's see, next slide. With this, uh, proposal, we are trying to formalize, to do a taxonomy of cybersecurity incidents. We are trying to define how cybersecurity incidents are impacting on production, how they are uh, defining those cybersecurity incidents, how are they defining different time losses, and therefore, how we are going to improve those time losses, how we are going to do, how we're going to put some security mechanisms in order to improve those time losses due to cybersecurity incidents. So it is directly connected the uh, mechanisms that we are putting in place with the investment, that's the investment, with the improvement and the reducing cost. So that finally gives us a, a formula. That formula is the implementation is somehow a, an implementation of how we are going to be aware of cybersecurity is an enabler or not. And that is the main question. Is it cybersecurity an industrial enabler or not? It is an enabler if some conditions happen, and that conditions is related to this formula. That conditions is if failures due to cybersecurity incidents are higher or lower than the investment that you put in place in order to run a cybersecurity or cyber resiliency mechanisms and operate in that. So at the, at the end of the day, what uh, directors in one factory want to know is to, to know if those cybersecurity mechanisms that you have put in place, that you have in deployed in your organizations, uh, you, can, you are able to monetize them. 
you are able to, to run them. You are able to know if they are uh, good enough to decrease those risks and if they are able to, uh, to say, okay, this is what I wanted to know. This is something that has to do uh, with knowing if those security mechanisms that you have put in place are able to, to reduce that time, that time to reduce those time losses that are reducing the, the performance in your machines, in your lines, in, in your plant. And when you are reducing that time, you are decreasing risk. And therefore, you are trying to invest uh, how or what you're trying to invest, how you are going to, to do that uh, investment in order to reduce that. So we call that uh, a kind of how you are going to monetize security. And we call that security as an industrial enabler, empirically spoken. <laughs>